Welcome to the asylum, the number one place for your toy and collectible fix. Receive the help you need only at the asylum. We hope you enjoy your visit. <laughs> Welcome one and all, Mike at the Asylum here presenting the first instalment of From Here to There. This will be a series of videos comparing properties that have been adapted for a new audience, whether it be books and comics adapted for TV and film, movie reboots and even toy reincarnations. I'll be covering it all. In this episode I'll be looking at Preacher the comic book and comparing it to its AMC TV series. For warning, there will be spoilers for both Preacher the comic book and the TV series. For the purpose of this comparison, I'll only be looking at series 1 of the show. If you don't want either property spoiled, I would suggest reading or watching what you need to and coming back at a later date. With that in mind, let's take a look at the premise of Preacher. Written by Garth Ennis and illustrated by Steve Dillon, the Vertigo comic ran from 1995 to 2000. Preacher sees its protagonist Jesse Custer becoming a vessel to a being known as Genesis. Genesis is the illegitimate offspring of an angel from heaven and a demon from hell, and is said to be more powerful than God himself. When possessed, the host of Genesis is empowered with what the book refers to as the voice of God. This gives the bearer the ability to impose any command on any person with just their words. It's later learned that upon the birth of Genesis, God himself left heaven in fear of his power. Jesse finds this out and takes on the mission to track down God to have him answer for his shortcomings, which then becomes the running theme of the series. On this mission, he's accompanied by his estranged ex-girlfriend Tulip, a fiery Texan woman distraught after Jesse had left her without explanation and fresh from rehab after being driven to drink by her loss. Tulip is accompanied by her recent acquaintance Cassidy, a gentleman of Irish descent who turns out to be a vampire. From here on in, adventure ensues over six gripping volumes worth of graphic novels. Fast forward to 2016 and AMC have acquired the rights to produce a Preacher TV series. Helmed by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and starring Dominic Cooper as Jesse, Ruth Nager as Tulip and Joe Gilgan as Cassidy. The show follows the comic book as a guide only, but sees many departures from its comic book source and butchers the contents to fit its purpose, which in my opinion feels flimsy at best. Let's look into some of the immediate differences now. So with regards to character setup, the comic sees Jesse portrayed as a confident man during his self-confessed crisis of faith. In the first issue, he explains to Tulip and Cassidy his disdain for the people of Anvil for their sinful antics and lies. This disdain leads to his proclaiming the local people's shortcomings in a drunken outburst at the local bar, and is knocked out cold for his own antics. He's not shown to have any fighting prowess or a threshold for pain. In the show's first episode, Jesse is portrayed as shy and uncertain of himself during his crisis of faith. The equivalent of the bar scene is completely different in its setup, and in said scene he proceeds to take out eight large men and is shown to have almost superhuman strength. Jesse's past is also alluded to, but we learn no details. Deferring my attention to Tulip and Cassidy now. In the first issue of the comic book, the pair meet after Tulip botches up an assassination attempt that she is forced to perform. She is chased away from the scene by an employee of the intended target, and it's during this chase that she meets Cassidy who is sitting in his truck at the side of a road and she holds him at gunpoint for a ride. They then hit the road until they stumble across a burning church that just so happens to contain one Jesse Custer. We find out in a later issue that the assassination Tulip was hired to perform was a one-off to cover a debt she had accrued and wasn't able to repay. This was out of character as she has a hatred for guns after her father was killed during a hunting accident when she was young. We later learn that her only other experience with shooting at people before this point was when she opened fire on a group of men who had just attacked and raped her friend Amy, but she did not kill anyone. In the show, Tulip and Cassidy's introductions are not intertwined. We meet Cassidy in the first episode after he escapes an action-packed altercation with a group of vampire hunters on an aeroplane above Anvil. He jumps out of the plane Captain America style without a parachute and almost dies in the desert from exposure to the sun and lack of internal organs. Luckily, he is able to heal himself by drinking the blood of a nearby cow. We also meet Tulip in the same episode in the following scene. It seems to be a flashback to another altercation, this time in a car with an unknown group of men. In the scene, she seemingly has combat training, no problem with guns, no problems with flat out stabbing people, is pretty handy with a shuck of corn, and is even prolific in the creation of weapons as she constructs a utensil firing cannon with the help of a couple of children, household objects, and it's powerful enough to take down a helicopter. Straight away from these differences, we can see that although the concepts for both properties are similar, their execution is profoundly different. 
The book attempts to keep its fantasy somewhat grounded in the realms of believability, similar to Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, whereas the show leads us down the road of the absurd. Okay, so if we take character development and setup out of the equation, and let's just focus on story structure for a moment. The book gives us all the narrative that we need within the first four or so issues. We meet the characters, we learn how they come together, we learn what Genesis is, its origin, what it can do as far as the narrative requires, we meet the Saint of Killers, learn his role in the whole thing, and we get on the road to find God and start the adventure. The show on the other hand takes the scenic route. Most of the series feels like filler and seems to try its hardest to hold back on the religious undertones, which is odd given the whole premise of the story. It replaces plot advancement for action pieces and flimsy storytelling to move us toward the conclusion of the series. Even the finale feels forced and like it came out of nowhere. Oh god isn't available to take a call. Okay. It takes the show nearly 8 hours to get to the same point that 2 slow hours of reading can accomplish and does it poorly. The unnecessary filling of time forced the showrunners to take aspects from Preacher Volume 5 with the Queen Cannon arc and butchers that which could have been a great season later in the show's life. The argument gets thrown around that you couldn't directly adapt the book. I personally don't think this is true, but to be honest, I wouldn't want a straight adaptation. I've read the books and I love them. What I wanted from the show was the same coherent and quick paced storytelling. Not an over bloated version of the property that feels like it was written by someone whose only research was a glance at Wikipedia. Don't get me wrong, there are some great set pieces in the show, such as Genesis attempting to find a host, the respawning angels in the motel, Quinn Cannon's sudden outburst and killing everyone in his office, but they are few, far between, and are held together by poor writing. I think given the time that it's taken to get this show into production makes wishing for a reboot a little bit far-fetched, so all I can hope is that the show gets back on course over the second season, and we don't just see more of the same. I'm not even sure if I'll personally continue to watch Preacher. I forced myself through the first season hoping to see a glimpse of what made me fall in love with the comic, but it never happened. I only watched it to the end because I'd gotten so far in that I had to see how it played out. Don't get me wrong, I'm not usually a stickler for butchered source material so long as it's done creatively, offers something of substance and has a good story. For me, personally, Preacher doesn't offer anything close to this. If I had to recommend where you get your Preacher fix, the comic books win every single time. No contest. And that brings me to the end of this first instalment of From Here to There. If you feel I missed anything or that I'm completely wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comments below. If you liked the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and share it with your friends. As always, I've been Mike, and I'll catch you in the asylum soon.